Hello and welcome to the Graphic Content. It's uh, episode four from season one. I'm your host, the great Muji. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about another Halloween comic, 30 Years of Terror. It's an anthology comic. Um, this one is actually written by Stephen Hutchinson, who kind of took over and wrote a bunch of Halloween comics for um, the, Hall the uh, comic company DDP. Bill the Bang, of course. A little bit later. Um, it was, this one came out in 2008, hence the 30 Years of Terror. And um, it has a bunch of different artists um, on the anthology, including uh, Tim Seeley, who was actually uh, making Hack Slash for DDP at the time, so he does an appearance on here. Definitely the biggest comic name that probably worked on any of these Halloween comics, actually. Um, and so it's an anthology, it's got uh, five different stories, all kind of different ones. All, of course, tie into things that happen in um, Halloween. Actually, enjoy for the most part all these comics we've talked about in the previous episodes including this up to this point with the only thing um really the biggest problem being that they're just so tied down by the halloween continuity like they're just trying to fit little missing pieces that weren't really missing they're just trying to add um to some of the old stories into the canon instead of just trying to do something completely on their own um, but this one still has its enjoyable moments so the first story is about the mckenzie family um, you, of course, would remember them from Halloween 1. That's the um, couple that Lori instructs uh, Tommy um, and Lindsay to run to their house and call the police um, after they get out of um, the house that Michael attacks. And um, we find out basically what happens. You see where Tommy and Lindsay run there, and then you uh, see that uh, they kind of have PTSD about it because they're so freaked out. And, of course, Michael comes back at some point to torment them. Um, they actually do another tie-in in this to Halloween 2. So Michael's at the McKenzie's house. Um, you see him in the background, and you see one of the kids shooting the candy, and they use that old um, Halloween like uh, legend of, you know, used to be worn when I was a kid about not um, taking candy that was open because of the possibility of them putting razor blades in it. And you see the little kid that shows up in the hospital in Halloween 2 with the, ra with the razor blade stuck in his uh, lip. He bites into some candy at the McKenzie's and gets the razor blade in there. And of course it's revealed that Michael's sitting in the background and I guess he's doctored up some candy here. <laughs> this is what he's decided to do this time. Um, you know, I mean, he does play pranks in the movie, so it's something. But, um, and then of course, you know, he kills, you assume he just kills the McKenzie's um, or the one that's still left alive. Um, we get another story, which is a pretty cool one. It's, it's actually Tommy. Um, is reading the comic Tarantula Man. You remember Tarantula Man as being one of the comics that Lori finds under the couch that Tommy's not supposed to have in Halloween 1. And it shows like a whole Tarantula Man story, so it's kind of cool. They make the comic within the comics, so that's something a little bit different that they do in these. Um, you also get just a kind of a random story of um, a Miss Haddonfield contest. Of course, terrible idea. She gets her head cut off. Spoilers. Um, I guess I should have been saying spoilers in every one of these comics. I mean, I spoiled the shit out of every one of these. And this is the first time I've ever warned you, so... Sorry. It's a new ship. I didn't... Didn't think about that. But, uh... We get another story about Lori. Basically, she's in a sanitarium. Um, you know, this is obviously... It's 30 years later, so it's set after um, H2O. And um, they just disregarded Resurrection, as everybody fucking should. And Lori's in the sanitarium just kind of trying to imagine like how good her life would have been without Michael, but she can't. She keeps imagining all these great things that would have happened. She had a normal family, but then it all ends in Michael coming fucking it up. So that's a pretty decent story. And then And then the final story is Michael tormenting Loomis. I mean basically Loomis is at his house with his nurse. It's in his like later years and he's got a map of all these different like unsolved mysteries that have happened in Haddonfield and surrounding towns and it basically just shows you a couple of times where Michael's just sneaking into Loomis's house. He could kill him but he's just sneaking in and planting little clues and of course every time Loomis shows up he's too late you can't stop him. But it's a fun little book. I definitely recommend it. Um, this one you should read. You can get it on eBay. It's out of print. Um, you can get it on eBay. It's like the most of the rest of these. It's 15 to 20 bucks, but it's actually a little bit of a thicker comic with some extra stories and um, probably the best one we've gone over so far. So recommend this one. Go check it out. I mean, especially, I mean, it's got some Loomis in it, so, you know, can't do better than that. But uh, that's going to be it for episode four of Graphic Content, and we will see you next time.
got there to pick me up, like, I couldn't even hold it anymore. I dropped trowel right in front of him. And when Chad woke up the next day, you know what was waiting for him out there on the sidewalk. He's back. He, uh, he's trying to pull the old Halloween one prank. The, um, acting like he's Bob, but jokes on him. That's a Egyptian, Egyptian cotton. 1600 thread count. You can't see shit.